A lot of commodity stocks are risky penny stocks. Yes, massive growth potential, but also massive failure potential. Though that is far from the case for all commodities, and I'm gonna be taking it to the opposite extreme and looking at the largest mining companies there is in today's comparison. Hey, my name is Tucker Krauss, I'm a 14 year old investor, and today's video I'm going to be looking into a quick financial comparison between the top four largest mining companies by revenue. I'll get into just a second why I chose top four and not top five, that's not important at this exact second. A lot of these names you'll surely recognize as very defensive, high dividend paying stocks. And so first, let's quickly hop into why I chose the companies that I did before I get into their financials as a quick comparison. And before we continue any further, make sure to smash that like button. Now, let's get into the video. Something I should definitely note is that I did buy into Rio Tinto a couple months back, long before I did as much in-depth research as I did now, just off like a P.E. ratio and dividend yield, pretty much. So do keep that bias in mind as we look through the rest of these companies, as again, Rio Tinto is the only one that I currently own and didn't do proper research for it. So let's get into the video. So for the companies that I chose, Investop just has the 10 largest mining companies ranked by their trailing 12 months revenue and because it was updated in september of 2020 it's fairly up to date first up is glencore followed by bhp then Rio Tinto, not even gonna try, with Vail rounding out the top five. Now, the reason I'm doing top four is because this is a Chinese company that trades in Shanghai, which I would rather avoid. And quickly, before we even look at anything else, because BHP trades with two separate tickers on the New York Stock Exchange, I just wanna quickly hop into the differences. So essentially, they are both just holding companies for BHP itself, which is the one that's actually making money with all the mines and whatnot. PLC has the BBL ticker, and Limited has the BHP HP ticker on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, Limited is an Australian company and PLC is a British company. And so essentially when BHP is making payments out to the two holding companies, it's sending it to PLC in British pounds and to Limited in Australian dollars. And because Australia has some weird dividend tax law, it does mean that the British company ends up paying out a larger dividend. And so with the ticker symbol BBL pays out a higher dividend, I'm gonna be focusing on BBL for the stock information, but they still hold the exact same company. So I'm sure you couldn't go wrong with either either ticker. Right, so first up, these are now ranked by market cap. So Glencore, despite having the largest revenue, now has the smallest market cap, at least relative to the other companies, with BHP being in first. Now for PE ratios, well, before we actually do that, please note that these were originally in pences and these were in pounds, both converted now to US dollars. But because Glencore didn't wasn't profitable in 2020, they don't have a PE ratio. Vales is extremely low with only 10. That's actually really good, especially in today's market. Rio Tinto, 15, that's also pretty all right. Now, BHP, again, 22, that's definitely, that's the highest tier, but that's still well below the S&P 500 average being in the 30s, but I would definitely like to see that be a bit lower, but of course, the PE ratio is far from the BL end all. Now, for dividend yield, they're all above 5%, except for Glencore, so these three at least are all great for income. Now, the exchange I'm, of course, focusing on is the New York Stock Exchange for all three of these, but then for Glencore, London. Now, quickly, a breakdown of their commodities that they are mining. Glencore, they don't really do it all nicely for you. They only break it down to industrial and marketing activities, at least when uh, off of craft.co. And so we can see that marketing activities make up the majority of it. And because marketing activities isn't actually their mines and operations, it is actually what they're doing is just transporting and selling commodities, whether that's from their own mines or from other companies' mines. Whereas their industrial activities, of course, are the mines themselves. And so maybe that's why their revenue is so much larger and their market cap is so much smaller is because a lot of what they're doing is transporting and selling commodities, not necessarily producing them, at least relative to the others. Now, for the commodities that they do produce, that includes things like copper, cobalt, nickel, etc. And so then going into energy, they do also have things like coal and oil. Base metals include things, of course, like copper and ferrous minerals are iron and things that have have a substantial amount of iron in them. So they are certainly a bit iron heavy, especially when compared to Rio Tinto, at least I'll get into that in just a second. Though they do still have quite a bit of base metals to help balance that 
out. And because they don't strictly say iron ore, they say all ferrous minerals. This isn't exactly all 100% iron, but it's iron and things similar to it. And then they do have a little bit of coal and some other things to help break it up. So I'm glad they're not super reliant on coal because me personally, I'm not a big fan of coal since I think it's more likely to be phased out before a lot of other things like oil are. But that's just personal opinion. Now, Rio Tinto, we can see it breaks it down the best for all us. We can see Iron Ore, they are also fairly reliant on, though not quite as much as Veil, with a substantial amount of aluminum. And then total energy in mills, that of course include things like coal. And then they do have quite a bit. I'm not sure why they choose to merge copper and diamonds together. But we can see they do in general seem to be fairly diverse, though a bit iron heavy, but still the same thing for Veil. Now, you might have noticed that, wait, where's BHP? Well, that's because, at least on the website I was looking at, didn't really give us an exact uh, chart, and so, but we can see that things like copper, iron, nickel are some of their top things, since that's, of course, what is listed in their commodity section of their website, so it makes sense, okay, these are probably their top things they are producing. So, quickly hopping over to a common size analysis in income, we always want the red to be lower and the black to be a a higher percentage and these are all ranked by net income so at least as a percentage of revenue and so we can see first place is Rio Tinto followed up by BHP then Vail thing is, I don't think this is exactly negative 1% since their net income was substantially negative. I just have the numbers over here, but we won't be focusing on them because it's a little bit messy. But we can just see in general, they did not do very good in 2020, to put it mildly. Their revenue actually dropped by about $72 billion when you're comparing 2020 to 2019. So to be fair, it probably would have been more fair to use 2019, but I'd rather be up to date. And this just shows, hey, they clearly didn't handle the pandemic very well, or maybe their was some other outside factor that really killed them this year but regardless their net profit margins have been dropping steadily at least since 2017 through to 2020 it was just really horrendous in 2020 but we can see then at least focusing on interest expense here we can see that veil does pay out the large which means their debt's not quite as manageable as some of the others bhp with three percent so it's still better than veil but it's not quite as good as rio tinto and glencore paying out only roughly one percent of their revenue in interest expenses now we can see one other thing I want to quickly note is that BHP does have a larger gross profit than Rio Tinto, but because they have more operating expenses and that sort of thing, their net income did end up being slightly lower. And the other thing, this isn't necessarily their tax rate, this is a percentage of revenue, and it is profits that are taxed. So in general, just off this, we can see all three of these look quite good other than Glencore, though of course Rio Tinto did quite well and it is slightly larger than the other two revenue wise so over here now we have done the same thing but for their balance sheets and so these are now ranked by total liabilities and we can see rio tinto again came in first with only about 47 percent at least 47 their total liabilities are equivalent to 47 percent of their total assets with that then being 50 percent 62 percent and 71 percent respectively so really pretty bad for glencore and then very Fairly mediocre for Vale and still quite good for BHP, only being ever so slightly behind. Now, the other thing I quickly want to focus on, though, is their cash versus their debt. Glencore, they have... When you compare their cash to the debt, it barely makes a dent. Their total debt is equivalent to 32% of their total assets, so really not good, whereas cash only makes up 1% of their total assets. And so they couldn't even make a dent in their current debt. Vale could pay off all of their current debt and a substantial amount of their long-term debt if they wanted to, but I, that is unlikely because lots of large companies like this and lots of, especially for commodity companies, generally will have more debt just to finance things a bit better. But theoretically, if they could, and if they wanted to, they could almost pay off all their debt. And then for BHP, not quite as good of a story as Vale, or roughly only half, but still a substantially better story than Glencore. Now, Rio Tinto could almost pay off all of their debt, they only 2% difference here, in paying off their debt, whereas it was closer to 7% for Vale. So again, just Rio Tinto does seem to be doing extremely well so far, with BHP doing not so far behind, with Glencore being completely avoided. And one other thing I forgot to mention is that as we move down the list, the amount of current liabilities increases relative to the total assets. 
and non-current liabilities. And so the noticeable thing is that this probably shows that Glencore's balance sheet was probably a lot better in 2019 as so many of their liabilities are current. So and same thing, their current debts substantially higher than the rest. It's very likely that during 2020, because a lot of their stuff is about shipping and selling stuff, that with all the supply shortages we saw, that they had to take on a lot of current liabilities to finance and keep the company going. Now on to a intrinsic value calculation using discounted free cash flow. So we can see that actually the best one here because was Vail with a 115% upside, Rio Tinto then with a 91% upside, BHP with a 65% upside, and a complete destruction to Glencore. Now to Glencore, I did want to be fair, and so what I assumed was in 2021 they'll make back half of that 72 billion they lost, and in 2022 they'll make up the second half of that 72 billion dollars they lost so by the end of 2022 they are back to where they were pre-covid for revenue wise and then growing at a reasonable rate from there but even then it still did not look really good at all and the other thing i should know is because these companies were so large i was using very conservative numbers something like rio tinto i was only assuming a free cash flow growth rate of about one percent and it still came out as substantially undervalued so even though Vale was fairly mediocre when it came to their income and income statement and balance sheet it did really really good for and so if you're wondering why that's case it's because discounted free cash flow is essentially just projecting out future growth rates and so I typically try and be conservative and use whatever has the lowest growth rate whether that's net income free cash flow or revenue but in this case even Vale's lowest KGAR was still around four percent compared to one percent for Rio Tinto's lowest their discounted free cash flow, but Rio Tinto and BHP still did quite well. Now let's quickly hop into their total score. Total score, of course, doesn't take into account the stock details or the commodity breakdowns because you might be like, oh, well, I don't mind that Vale has a whole lot more iron or, oh, maybe I would prefer to invest in a company with a smaller dividend because they can use it to grow the company more that cash, whatever it is. And then first we can see that, okay, oh, well, this isn't done quite right. This would be four. Oh. I completely destroyed it. I'm sorry. But would be four points and one. But that's not too important. So we can see Rio Tinto is first place, followed up with Vale and BHP being tied. Though I placed Vale above due to, yes, they did lose twice compared to BHP. Because their discounted free cash flow was insanely good, I think that's more important. At least that's my opinion. Though you could flip this if you disagree with that. Then Glencore came in last every single time, so frankly did not do really good at all. So let's quickly hop into the outro and my thoughts. For the most part, these stocks do look like very solid buys, with the exception of Glencore, though as I said earlier, it could be worth it if you think they'll be able to get all that revenue back. And hey, regardless, I guess my guess to buy Rio Tinto worked out quite well. Heck, my average price is pretty much identical to a 50% margin of safety price. So I will be making sure to put together a video on Rio Tinto in the near future. Make sure to leave any comments and thoughts, opinions, that sort of thing in the comment section down below. Make sure to smash that like button and I will see you next time.